The RTX 5090 may be top dog right now, but of course, as they say, tomorrow is another day. And it is rather frustrating, at least in my personal opinion, that AMD did cancel the high-end rumored RDNA 4 based GPUs. Even theoretically, if you were to imagine an RX 9070 XT having a more powerful brother that let's say had 33% more workgroup processors and a bunch of other stuff that of course would augment that such as more memory bandwidth, it would be very interesting to see how it would fare against Nvidia's RTX 50 lineup. Nvidia would probably still have the edge in things like ray tracing, but raster performance and perhaps price to performance ratio I could certainly imagine AMD being very competitive. And that brings us to today's video because there are a couple of very interesting tip bits that have leaked online, as they leaked in such a way because they are courtesy of Linux patches. And this is for not only Intel's celestial range of GPUs, but also RDNA 5 or C, uh, UDNA if you prefer. There's a lot of stuff to get through here, so let's just do just that. After this quick message from the sponsor of the video, this video is sponsored by WhoKeys. Get reliable, fast, and cheap delivery of legitimate Windows 11, Windows 10, and Microsoft Office keys. We've been there before. That video game that you've been looking forward to for months on end. Or maybe you're just browsing the internet and suddenly, bang, Windows activation reminder pops up, totally breaking your immersion despite the fact that you've been trying to block out the best you can up until this point. Haunts you like a villain out of a survival horror game. Don't worry, Sir Cloppy, who totally isn't a ripoff of other IPs. We've already got a legit copy of Windows, thanks to WhoKeys, the sponsor of this video. <sighs> anyway, as I was saying, you don't need to break the bank to pick up your copy of Windows 11. You can get all of the features, such as being able to customize your desktop, and of course, not be bothered by that activation reminder and you can pick this up courtesy of WhoKeys. Buying your key on WhoKeys is super simple and is a fast and easy as well as safe process. I personally have purchased several keys on my own personal account using WhoKeys as well as several of my friends have bought not just Windows but Microsoft Office and other even software such as games as well and have had absolutely no problems at all. For example, you can pick up Windows 11 Pro for just 30 US dollars 96 instead of the full price of 208. And if you do prefer to stay on Windows 10, it may be a good idea for you instead to pick up the LTSC version, which has extended support for your confidence, because this means you'll be able to get many of the critical security and vulnerability patches. And this is available for just $11.10 with our code RGT. You simply buy your key and within just a few seconds, you are given it on screen. And of course, you can also access it via email. There is no stress, no fuss, just safe and quick and convenient. So what are you waiting for? You can click the link in the video description below. And of course, it's also the pinned comment and you can use our coupon code RGT, that is RGT, to net yourself 25% off site-wide. And again, you can pick up Windows 11, Microsoft Office, games, and lots of other stuff besides. It's safe, fast, and convenient. So once again, thanks to Hookies for sponsoring the video. Now, unfortunately, some of this does get a little technical. So just for your FYI, I'm gonna be using simplified examples for some of the things I'm gonna be discussing here. If you are very technically inclined, you may have to grit your teeth a little bit, or perhaps if you're very technically inclined, you can also comment down below to perhaps explain things more, well, nuanced. But I want everyone to be on the same page as much as possible. And of course, I would encourage you all to do some Googling. AMD's own white papers, plus some other uh, sources of information will give you some pretty good insights. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump in and uh, we'll first of all look at RDNA 5, or I guess UDNA more accurately, or GFX 13. Uh, and this is courtesy of Kepler L2. And he has discovered, again, courtesy of various Linux patches, a few interesting code uh, excerpts. And one of those you will notice, um, well, there's a couple of references to GFX 13. Now, before we get into the GFX 13 stuff though, notice enable wavefront size 32. That specifically says it's for GFX 10 plus. Now go down just a few little 
and nudges and we have enable wave group that is being set as a flag for gfx 13 based gpus now just again to be clear gfx 12 um, would be for rdna 4 gfx 13 is for rdna 5 or udna whatever you want to call it now kepler said um and uh again i'm going to be uh quoting him directly here that uh Perhaps it's related to SWC or Streaming Wave Coalescer. This is basically maybe somewhat like an out of order execution. Each SIMD takes multiple Wave 32 or 64, a Wave group as inputs and reorders them depending. Now, it's also possible that this is not related to this. It's slightly possible. Um, Microsoft have SIR, which is Shader um, Execution Reordering. Um, but that would be more in line with hardware-based ray tracing. And we saw this uh, initially supported, I believe, I may be incorrect here. I think it was first introduced with RTX 40 with ADA. But since then, obviously, there have been numerous improvements here or there. So what exactly does all of this mean? Well, again, I'm going to be using some simplified examples here. So if we were to go back to wavefront size... Um, basically, think of modern-day AMD GPUs as having 64 lanes where stuff can be issued. This is essentially how workgroup processors slash compute units work on the RDNA-based graphics. And yes, again, simplifying this. So when you're setting the flag to 32, essentially you can issue two sets of different instructions to those uh, lanes. And what basically with the uh, with the grouping that seems to be incurring here is you're essentially bundling all of this stuff together. There's also a very interesting rumor, I've mentioned it a few times, that uh, AMD with the GFX 13 architecture are going to have some type of register renaming. And register renaming could be quite beneficial in this particular instance because if the graphics card is basically creating a lot of its own work and jumping from one task to another it would make a lot of sense because basically registers essentially are just really small fast areas of memory on the gpu they're essentially like an even faster uh, region of cache now i do want to give some courtesy credit here because while i initially spotted the RDNA 5 thing specifically from Kepler because I do follow him. Um, I also found an article on videocards.com which does also reference the Kepler discovery but I wasn't aware of x86 is back again um, or dead and back should I say and uh, they basically have made a somewhat similar discovery but for uh, well, Celestial. There's not as much architectural information here, but it does seem we have always used Gen XX to name Intel GPUs, but according to official B-Spec, after Gen 11, the architecture started to use XE, XE2, XE3, and XE4. And then you can see this: the XE architecture, also called Gen 12, because of many architectures are classified into it and then they specifically reference xe4 so for those who do not know that is of course celestial so if nothing else it's additional confirmation that intel are going to be continuing to push forward with celestial um Unfortunately, I have no real insight into the performance targets at the moment. The only thing I was told quite some time back is that Celestial is going to be aiming for high performance parity with NVIDIA's flagship. Unfortunately, this is quite some time ago, and basically, there's been so much stuff that has happened since then with Intel as a company. I think that Intel actually has a pretty good shot at being competitive in the longer run but unfortunately with graphics it's not just like the architecture itself the software stack and this has been i think intel have made some major strides with uh their G with their drivers and software um since the launch of the original alchemist gpus and battle mage has improved things decently i actually i would say even more than decently um, especially for older DirectX versions. So, for example, DF DX12 games ran really well, in most of the time anyway, on uh, Alchemist, but uh, DX9 and 10, it wasn't so good. <laughs> um, however, at the moment, the biggest problem is you seem to have situations with 
certain CPUs, older CPUs being, a, basically it's just drive overhead. So hopefully things can improve with Intel in the long run. I do believe they probably will improve things, but of course that is a significant investment because as you probably know, when it comes to like you know drivers there is so much work that goes into actually having the drivers ready especially for like games and stuff like that because obviously you need to make sure the games don't crash and then obviously you have new titles coming out all of the time and now are both the b770 and b780 imminent for an announcement well according to an official intel twitter account maybe so just for clarity's sake, of course, this would be featuring a much higher tier of performance. It would be featuring G31. And I've spoken about the specifications about this several times in the past. Ultimately, how accurate that information is, we'll have to wait and see. But Intel are basically saying that, uh, stay tuned, we're going to hear about it pretty soon. I would be very curious if this is the case. We've heard some pretty solid information that Intel are working on, you know, their professional series, which are going to obviously have more VRAM. But whether or not they're going to be announcing a high performance tier gaming product, that hasn't exactly been clear. There have been a lot of rumors that we're going to see it pretty soon, and then obviously that never materializes. I really want them to. Uh, AMD, of course, are set to announce the 9060 XT in the coming weeks, and I think that those are going to be fairly well received. It's going to, of course, as always, depend on the pricing and availability as much as the performance at this point. But um, if Intel can offer a, another competitor, that's always a good thing. How well it's going to perform, honestly, I don't know. Because it's not just the specifications, it's also Intel's drivers, which are going to be very curious. I am very, very, very hopeful, though, that Intel does continue to compete, especially with Celestial in the future. I know that this stuff does take a lot of time, um, and it's a very difficult market to get into. But ultimately, I just don't want a situation where we only have one player, that is NVIDIA, or even two players is not ideal either, because let's say hypothetically, Battle Mage had been as fast as a 5080, you know, and that had been at launch. It would have really helped with the RTX 5080 shortages. It would have also given us, a, it just, it helps everyone. Like it's not just like the shortages, it helps bring down price as well, as much as possible with all the craziness that's going on with the tariffs. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Subscribe if you want more stuff. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.